a minute. Here we go. Dr. Haynes, are you pre are you present? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Just trying to get this the switchboard thing going. This is this is um an unprecedented move for me on my part having three different guests on at the same time. And so uh, we have a un op big open panel discussion going on here. And um, so what I'm going to do is, um, Joey, since I have you on the line, um, you being um, um, uh, active in the public awareness aspect of this, um, to kind of help me with, with putting that perspective on some of the things that I'm going to address, because one of the things that really irked me, as I said in the introduction of this episode, is that a lot of people are running into this um, madness on on the Internet. It's all over the Internet. Um, you can find it on YouTube. I'm not sure how, how much of it has infiltrated some of the other video sites, but there's there are some all over YouTube. There are, there are people that believe that, that AIDS and HIV is a hoax and putting Deuceberg's videos all out. Um, and and then there's there's people on message boards, um, and and so um, just kind of as a as from that perspective, Joy, I, I kind of help um, when whenever you can to kind of provide perspective on on any of the feedback that and that um, our two guests, uh, Professor Davis and Dr. Haynes, may have to offer. Sure. Well, I just from 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 my perspective, having been, you know, in. Um, you know, Los Angeles and New York in the early 1980s when um, men started to die and women started to die from uh, what was at that point in time uh, called GRID, gay-related uh, immunodeficiency, and then quickly changed to AIDS when they realized that it wasn't just associated with homosexuals. Um, you know, I, I have, you know, 20 years of experience of seeing many, many people, friends, colleagues, co-workers, um, classmates um, get sick and die before there were medications. So first of all, debunk that one myth that has been going around that somehow the HIV medications um, actually cause AIDS. I mean, that, that is absolutely ridiculous because people had this illness and were dying long before the pharmaceutical companies ever started to develop, put money towards development and research into HIV medications. But also that this is not a new uh, virus. There, there are documentation of people who were getting sick um, as, as early, uh, from my uh, recollection, uh, to the late 1950s, and died mysteriously, and um, the doctors didn't know what it was. And you, you realize that looking back, they're able to um, project and theorize that, you know, there was the virus was around for a long, long time. And, and as you know, as technology improves, and as transportation improved, and you know, it truly becomes a global village. Things that used to be isolated, viral infections that perhaps were isolated in one community or one country, are now much more readily transmitted. So, um, the the other thing about this is that I think when somebody on the internet, first of all, the internet itself is a treasure trove of information, both good and bad. So, you know, you can find all kinds of horrible negative things. And just because it's on the Internet does not make it true. And for those people that give credence to, you know, these few uh, people in the scientific community who feel that HIV and AIDS is not the cause of uh, AIDS um, are ignoring all of the tremendous amount of other scientific evidence and epidemiological data and, and professors and, and who... who you know who do know and acknowledge where HIV has been and where it's going today. So that that's one thing I, I want to say. Again, I just want to emphasize that you know people who buy into that denial are really doing themselves a disservice. And I'm particularly concerned that there would be young people in the community who you know who don't have the history of seeing people get sick and die before there were medications available and who may buy into this. That's that's the scary thing to me. Absolutely, absolutely. And and, and that's so why don't we just jump right into that question. Doctor Haynes, do you have anything to say in regards to um the the claim that A Z T medicines cause AIDS? Uh yes. Well I think well a lot of it has to do with just general ignorance of exactly what AZT is. 
because if anybody, if the people who were making those claims knew what AZT was in the first place, there would be no possible way that they could claim that. So first of all, just a general description of AZT. AZT is, a, well, the letters, it's an acronym for a really long chemical name, and I'm not going to get into <laughs> exactly what that is. But it, it, what, it do, what it is is that, so I think maybe the general audience is familiar with DNA, okay? So mm -hmm. DNA is pretty much um, the, the molecule that is common to all life forms or anything that resembles life. Well, HIV has uh, something similar to DNA that it carries around, and the way that it reproduces itself is by replicating that genetic information. Uh, HIV doesn't do this the same way that a human cell does. Okay, so a human cell has a certain machinery that replicates the DNA so it can divide into two new cells. HIV also replicates, but it uses a different type of machinery to replicate its genes. What AZT does is that it is a, um, it's like it's a mimic uh, building block for DNA. Okay. So AZT is like is a fake building block for DNA, for DNA replication of where when it gets um, picked up by the replication machinery, it gets incorporated and causes the replication to shut down, kind of like you're throwing a wrench into, uh, in, into an engine or something. Now, uh. the thing about human replication is that human, the, machine, the mechanisms that replicate human DNA can... Uh, they can incorporate that monkey wrench, but what they do is that those mechanisms are smart enough to then excise it out and get rid of it and then carry out normal replication. AZT, the, uh, the machinery that replicates HIV genes is not smart enough to do that, okay, without getting into all of the biochemistry. And for the biology specialists out there, I didn't just say that HIV, the, the gene that's responsible for replicating HIV is called um, reverse transcriptase. And human DNA is replicated by um, a DNA synthesis machinery that is not reverse transcriptase. So it's, AZT is essentially something that is a, um, a decoy that the HIV machinery picks up and attempts to use to replicate its it seems, and that AZT molecule stops it from doing that. That's how AZT works. There is no way that the AZT molecule could cause AIDS. So in other words, you're saying that the AZT kind of molecule, I, I, uh, I, and de definitely add more if I'm oversimplifying it, so it kind of distracts oh, no, no, no the HIV. So it, it distracts the HIV virus, in other words. Yeah, so basically what it does, so just uh, imagine that you have an assembly line and the people are blindfolded, okay? So mm -hmm. they're putting together clocks, okay? So a person comes along and hands them a gear that kind of feels like a gear, but it, it's missing a tooth. It doesn't work properly. So those folks are going to just blindly grab that decoy gear and stick it in the clock and the clock doesn't work anymore. That's pretty much how AZT works with regards to HIV replication. So okay. a person will have the virus and the virus is only harmful as it proliferates, as it replicates itself. So the, okay. uh, the uh, purpose of AZT is to stop that replication from happening and destroying all its cells. Ah, uh, I see. Um, Professor Davis, anything to add? Oh, um, she gave a very good explanation. <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to say that I've been uh, involved in this work since 1984, 1985, and even way back then, almost 25 years ago, um, we still had people in the community uh, uh, denying that uh, HIV existed or that AIDS existed. So this is nothing new, I know, in the African-American community. It's, it's just alarming to me as a health educator when we're out in the community trying to educate and inform so that people can make uh, informed choices to protect themselves that people would be, believe some of these claims that you're talking about that are being uh, presented on the, through the Internet. It's very alarming. 
definitely, definitely. Because the so. level of ignorance in our community after 25 years is, is fairly high, and there's still a lot right. of denial that's going on. And, and so we've got to find a way to overcome this so that the community can be, be more educated so that they can protect themselves. 